We're good. Yep. What's up, guys? Uh, we're back at it again. We're going to be uh, prepping some bare metal parts um, for you, you painters out there that are like taking customers' parts and painting for them. Um, a lot of times, these are the, the parts that you'll be getting. Um, these exact fenders I've painted. I can't tell you how many times in the last like 15 years. So. Uh, we're going to kind of go over how to degrease them, how to uh, uh, put an edge to them, and then how to mix up the 2K primer, and uh, we're go through all the sanding process and everything. So it shouldn't take too long, maybe 45 minutes or so. Make sure we're going live on Amazon as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and show them the pictures there. All right, so a lot of times, what you'll get is the customer will buy um, aftermarket parts. And what that's exactly what these are for a sporty. So I haven't even pulled these out of the bag yet, but you can see that they really oil these things up before they send them out to you. Like, look at all that. These things are so greasy. But this actually isn't too bad. It looks pretty good. I mean, the edges are a little bit jagged right there. I don't know. There's not, once the paint builds up, that's kind of disappointing. You see, it's just a little jagged right there. Is that filming? There we go. Um, I think the best thing to do is I'll, I'll probably take the 80 grit to that and we'll go ahead and shave that down. Like I said, I haven't even looked at these things. So the front looks like it's rolled over. The back is just cut. Uh, other than that, not too bad. I'd give it a 6 out of a 10. Something like that. All right, let's check out some drag specialties. This is probably like a $250 fender or something. A lot of guys will send these in instead of sending in their factory stuff because they can somewhat modify them. These things usually bolt right up. But once again, you can see like how much grease and oil they pack these with because they don't want them to rust. And we need to make sure we get all of that off before we go and try to even sand or uh, definitely paint these things. You know, if you were to go to sand this right now and scuff it down with all that oil on there, all you're going to do is shove that all into the metal, um, into the, the scratches. And it's going to be that much harder to get it out. So the best thing to do is we're going to clean it now, get it all off. Um, we're going to sand it up and we'll clean it again, but we're going to start from underneath. We're going to use, I like to use the stuff in the can, prep all. This will like a, this is your, like a wax and grease remover. Yeah. That'll any kind of wax and grease remover is going to work. I'm just going to coat the inside. Matt gave you a $10 super chat. Hey, thanks Matt. Appreciate that. Hopefully you guys can hear me. All right. Got the booth on. You see, I'm starting to really like melt into those oils. We're gonna let that sit. There's so much in there. You can see that. I like that you do the underneath first. All right, we'll take a clean rag. We're gonna get in there. scrub it down we're going to clean this thing twice clean it once initially and then we'll change the rag and clean it one more time Gotta really try to make sure you get up in there because they're gonna have oil and grease up in there. Like I said, these are brand new. They're just kind of packed with a uh, machining oil or something. Put something in there, keep it from rusting away in the bag. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and um, 
I'll use this rack for something else later, but not for anything for these. I'm going to switch to a different rack here. I like to saturate the whole thing, really. You can buy this in like the gallon, uh, gallon jugs. Use two racks. I always like the aerosol. I don't think it was faster and it's more effective. We always taught you always kind of like wipe in one direction and you move the rack. I'm not sure why, but <laughs> that's the way I always learned. It's kind of the way I've always done it. I'm sure there's a reason because once you run your rag across it twice, it recontaminates it. But that's just the initial cleaning there. Someone said, have you ever used 3M scotch Bright pads? For scuffing for paint prep? Yes. Yep, that's one way to do it. Uh, the one thing is with Scotch Bright is it just scuffs it up and doesn't sand the surface smooth. So um, I prefer a sanding sponge, but um, it kind of depends on what you're doing. If you're just wanting to scuff it down and you're not wanting to smooth it out, the 3M pads or Scotch Bright pads are great because they last forever. Someone asked, do you wash and reuse your microfiber towels? No, not usually. All right, I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, blew all over the place. I'm going to hit it one more time on the outside. This is a different rag again. So I've already used three rags on this because I really don't want to deal with any kind of oil or anything like that because I'm telling you, there, there's even a trace of that oil, you're going to tape to it and it's going to peel it right off. Like, it doesn't hold to it at all. So you're looking at that, oh, it's, oh, it's way better, right? Yeah. Okay. Someone said it's also good to clean with acetone. Yeah, for sure. I love cleaning with acetone because it dries all the surface out. You could totally see that it's all gone. Acetone is my favorite solvent. <laughs> you have a favorite solvent, Ash? No. <laughs> I don't. Think I don't so. ever use acetone, but it's my favorite. Okay, that looks great. So, Someone said, is the, is the degreaser specifically for automotive or does it matter? You're gonna wanna use automotive. You're always gonna wanna use automotive stuff pretty much on everything. That doesn't, does, does not include O'Reilly or AutoTone. Their, their paint section is not good either. Unless you're buying Scotch Brite or something like that. Maybe even Mondo, but don't go, don't buy their um, base coats or clear coats or anything you put in the gun. How about lacquer thinner? Yeah, you could buy lacquer thinner. There? Or uh, cleaning it with lacquer thinner? Maybe that's what he's asking. Yeah, no, I don't think I would. It probably work. Uh, there's just better stuff. The stuff that we're using here is made for this, exactly this purpose.
right. Okay, looking good. Step two, we need to put a little bit of an etch into these. See how smooth they are? They're super smooth. Like these were probably rolled out or they stamped out. They're probably stamped. I don't know how they made them, but they're nice and smooth. We need to put some some sort of an etch to this to help the primers um, grab onto the, the metal a little better. We'll talk a little bit more about the primer here in a second once we mix it up. But like I said, it's better to have um, some sort of a scratch there. So we're gonna use 80 grit. Uh, I'm not sure why I grabbed 80 grit. Uh, maybe 80 grit will be fine. Uh, I would actually prefer 180 grit over 80 grit gonna put less of a scratch into it but we'll kind of just graze over it i think we'll be fine someone said have ever clean your airbrush with acetone or is it too rough on the parts and the seal i always use lacquer thinner but i have used acetone in the past they want to see that can of stuff again all right there's a couple of ways you can put scuff these down you can just hit it with one of the sanding sponges you can hit it with scotch bright um like somebody was mentioning before you can hit it with, with scotch bright but we need to put some sort of a uh, scratch or a grit into it so the primer has something to adhere to uh, more than just that smooth surface um, so that's one way to do it uh, the, another way to do it is you can hook up you know what this thing's called yeah. What's it called? A sander. What kind of sander? A DA. Oh, what size is it? Uh, six. Yep, six inch. Good job. So that's important because if you're buying a five inch DA sander, you're buying something for more likely like the woodworking oh, look, industry. There's a, a oh, there clip. you go. Did you see that? No, did I you didn't. Cheat? Now I just did. Tell the truth. No, I help you pack, pack stuff. I know it's a six inch. I just couldn't remember for sure. But if you're buying a five inch, you're probably buying a sander that's meant for woodworking and stuff like that. You need to make sure you get a six inch. Um, six inches is what standard in automotive. So think of Subway. Six inch Subway, yeah. <laughs> so you're so smart. Someone says she's paying attention more than you think. I, that's right, I am. <laughs> So let's go ahead and we can, oh, what's this thing called then? Interface pad. Oh, yep. What does it do? Pads really through the sand. Exactly. Paper. So it kind of like builds contour, right? It makes contour. Yeah. So it sands better. Like on the spinner. Yep. So you can also use this. We'll be using this tool later, but I'm going to go ahead and just hit it with this, uh, with this Limeline uh, pad here. We don't really need much enough to a little bit of a grit to it make sure we get our legs What's the grit on the pad? It's 600. Yeah, it is 600. Yeah, and you could definitely go more coarse on this, um, but 600 is going to be just enough to get like get that doled out, and then you're not going to have worry. Like I would use the 80 grit. I would prefer if I had 180 right here. I would use that. Reason being is if your scratches are too big, sometimes like if you were to say like sand your body filler that you put there was a dent and you did body filler and you were to sand the body filler with like 80 grit or 36 grit and you were to leave it I'm like oh okay i'll just spray my sandable primer over that and it'll cover all those scratches right well that's fine yeah that works and then you cut it down and the scratches are gone but what happens is things start to move around and shift and um the sun will hit it and things Will settle in and those scratches will come back because things swell and contract at different rates because they're different materials so make sure you watch that it's probably less likely because this is metal but if we were sanding a primer 
or especially a body filler, like I said, that stuff contracts different and you, it can cause you, your, uh, there's actually a term for it. I can't remember what it is, but I don't know. I, I, I want to say it's something, but that's probably the wrong word. So I don't want to say it, but yeah, basically your sand scratches will come back and they'll come back to haunt you like even two months, maybe six months down the road. Especially if you're painting it black or something like that. It's uh, so keep that in mind. You always want to kind of smooth things out with a, a lighter grip. Swampy sent you a ten dollars super chat. Hell yeah, Swampy man. And then someone says, on your Amazon shop, you have the Iwata Media Eclipse and the Neo. What's the differences mainly between the two? I am looking for one that would spray urethane with ease I, that I can practice with. Um, yeah, so I would start with the Neo. I mean, if you're just getting into it, because you probably have other stuff to buy too. Uh, if, and then maybe move up to the Eclipse because, you know, by the time you're done practicing, you're going to be wearing that thing out. And, you know, to be honest with you, they don't last as long as an Eclipse. You can literally have Eclipse for two years as a professional. Uh, the Neo probably lasts a year or so. So it's kind of up to you. I mean, it's kind of a kind of a, kind of a pretty big price jump within those two. But I always I always prefer to buy two Neos rather than one Eclipse. That's me though. And someone said just started a project that was fresh painted, wasn't prepped or primed. Uh, let's see, prepped or primed. Wasn't prepped or primed on bare metal, now stripping and completely doing over the right way. Oh, yeah. That's, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, a lot of... These are... Like I said, I've, I've painted this particular fender many a time. All right, we're good there. Go ahead and grab a brush rack. Clean them one more time. Oh. <laughs> Don't drip yeah. that prep ball on me. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> little dribble. Jeremy just sent you a ten dollar super chat. Oh, yeah, Jeremy, appreciate that. And someone Thanks, said, guys. "How would this process be different with ABS plastic vendors?" Oh, um, you would definitely wax and grease the hell out of it because there's a good chance there's going to be like a mold release or something on there still from the factory. Depends on how old the parts are. If they're more oxidized, you're going to have a better chance of that not being the case. But uh, you would put an adhesion promoter down on it. Um, maybe do some research to see what kind of plastics on there because there is certain adhesion promoters for certain plastics. So you'd spray a light coat of that after you sand it down kind of like this scuff it down and then you would uh pr most likely go straight to paint you wouldn't even you wouldn't even mess with the primer because really you're with plastics you want to keep the thickness down because if it's too thick the thicker it is the more chance it has of like breaking and having issues and a lot of other things on plastic jordan sent you a 20 dollar super chat yeah right on jordan thanks guys all you i appreciate that and someone asked, when you, uh, just went away, hold on. When you are sanding, do you go more than 600 grit? Yes, I do. Um, if I'm trying to pull off paint, I'll use 80 grit or 180 grit. Um, if I'm sanding Bondo, I'll do 80 grit or 180 grit. Uh, I'll even do 400 grit on clear coat sometimes. But I think 600 grit is the most... It's most widely used, at least that's what I usually use, and that's a lot of the stuff that, that we do sell. It's 600 grit. We find that to be the most useful. All right, you can see how nice it's all dried up. No more oil. You know what, I'm not even gonna change my gloves here. These things are probably all greasy. So you can maybe clean it one more time. Wipe down real quick. We don't want 
any of that oil. Shane just said, hey, what's up? He's a fan of your work from British Columbia, Canada. Oh, yeah, right on. What do they say in Canada? What's well, something clever I could say that is in Canada? Mum. <laughs> I don't know what you said. That's how you say mom. Mom? Yeah. Mom? Mum. A boat. I'm trying to think what else my friend says. Joe is Canadian. Okay, so we're ready. I'm going to go ahead and uh, you can go ahead and peek through the window. You can even come in, actually. There's no paint fumes yet. So we're going to go ahead and hang these up. The nice thing is with, we do need to hang it because we have to um, we have to get up the primer all up underneath here and everything. But uh, So we are going to hang this from that hole right there, which that's convenient. And then we have a few to choose from right here. But we do, like I said, we need to hang them because we do need to get primer up underneath here. Someone said, when starting a job, will you strip a painted part down to bare metal to start over or sand original paint some and use it as a base? Yes, uh, second, the second way is right. That's how I do it, at least. If it's factory paint and the paint's in good condition, um, no cracks or anything like going wrong with it, and usually there's not a problem, you would sand it down. In some cases, if there's rock chips and stuff like that, you would primer it with the same sandable primer that we're going to be using here in a second. Um, or you can sand it down with 600 grit, flush out any kind of minor things, and then you can go straight to base coat. Really, keeping the uh, factory primers uh, that they put on stock parts, you they're they're better than what we can reproduce. So keep those on. Um, as long as it's factory paint, go ahead. I feel comfortable doing it. I've been doing it for a long time. That's how a lot of people do it. It's just a better way than, than stripping it all down, starting over, is because. Like I said, the primers are good. They're just not what factory can do. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the stuff over here. Yep. All right, so we have the uh, Limeline Sandable Primer. This is a two to one mixture with the hardener. You got part A and part B. And there's double the amount in there than there is in here. So it's a two to one ratio. And if you can't tell, it says right back here. Mix two to one, part A, part B, easy enough. How we do that is you can get buy a mixing cup or you can use this disposable system. Um, but this nice thing about this is you can just slip the cup in there. You can, this is, I don't know what all this other gibberish is, milliliters. Uh, this is a way you could also do it as well. Fill it up to the two on, if, it, if this is a four to one mixture, which it's not, it's a two to one mixture right here. So you would fill it up to the one and then you would fill it up to the one here for, uh, with the hardener. So it does the math for it you. It does the math for you if you want to do that. I just feel like it's easier to use the ounces here and always go to like like on this, I'm probably gonna put um, probably 12 ounces, right? I don't know, let me think. How big are those fuses? Yeah, I'll probably do um, eight ounces and then another four ounces of hardener. And if I need to mix up a little more, I'll go ahead and do that, but I think that'll probably do it. The parts are pretty smooth. There's no body filler to soak any of that in. Um, no damage or anything like that. So I think we're gonna get away with, you know, three coats and would be good. But I think if we're ready, let's go ahead and... So, so someone asked, what type of primer do you use for your metal jobs? Metal jobs? Yeah. Metal what flake? What type of primer do you use? So this is a direct-to-metal primer that we're using right here. Um, it is a sandable primer. Then someone here. said, do you seal with an epoxy primer? Yeah, you can seal with an epoxy primer. Um, there's a, Like I said, there's a lot of different ways that you can do these, these paint jobs. Um, if, you, if you were painting on rusted parts or parts that have been exposed to kind of rust and corrosion and have already started that process, then you would most likely want to spray down an epoxy primer over first because the epoxy primer is going to hold corrosion back uh, a lot better than what a sandable primer like this would. 
they're both going to do a good job. Um, you can't, the epoxy is just so good if that it's just going to kill it off and seal it up much better than what this would do by itself. So these have never been exposed to anything. Um, they're going to be sealed up tight. Uh, this is direct metal. This does offer some corrosion protection, and this also is sandable. If you're going to go spray the epoxy and you're going to try to sand it and block things out with it, that's just not going to work because it dries so rock hard and literally like it seals to the lid. It's, it's some really hard stuff and it sticks. Given the name epoxy primer, I mean, everybody knows epoxy sticks like crazy. Right. That's just an epoxy glue, epoxy. Well, this is epoxy primer we're talking about. This stuff, it sticks like mad, but it, it dries um, really hard and it's hard to sand and it's really not really workable. This is workable. It is direct to metal and it does have properties to make it sandable. So, Someone said, that can that primer be a surfacer or a sealer depending on the amount of reducer? Yes. Yep. It can be a sealer as well. You would, um, you could seal it up and you actually wouldn't even really need to reduce it if you didn't want to. Um, that's kind of up to you. But yeah, you would, you would seal it up and then within 30 minutes or, you know, it's kind of hard to say because everybody's time window is a little bit different because of the heat and the, the humidity, um, how, how heavy you're spraying the coats and stuff like that. But it is coatable without sanding uh, within a certain time frame, which is within half an hour to an hour i wouldn't go anything more than that without letting it dry and scuffing it up or sanding it and then it's ready for the next layers what about running a 2k sealer rather rather than a primer uh yeah 2k sealer is great you can do that and then you can paint right over the top of it uh, and that's definitely one way to do it when would you want to use a high build primer um you use a high build primer when you have either i like Really, I use a high build primer with anything, even if it is the bare metal parts, because you need to build it up high enough that you need to get it smooth um, quickly. And, you know, high build is I mean, more of a name than anything. I mean, it's all about the thickness and how much body is in it. But um, you could always do more coats, um, less coats and thin it out a little bit. This can be thinned up to 10%. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there's, like I said, there's a lot of different ways to do it. This is the way I would prefer. If these parts were kind of rusted out or something, like I said, then I would seal them up with an epoxy beforehand. All right, we'll get this mixed up. And okay, what are we going to? The eight? Eight. Yeah. Somebody says, someone has a question about some leaf stuff, but I know you're. Uh, maybe he can ask that later on this video. <clears throat> um, but someone said, my paint job requires 65 degrees. Is it okay to leave it in the garage if the temp drops overnight? Uh, yeah, that I don't see a problem with that. As long as it doesn't get really cold, like into freezing, it is going to slow down that dry time. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, and Brian, maybe ask your question a little later and I'll uh, put it up here again and I'll ask him. All right, so did I fill that up to the eight? I did. Perfect. I nailed it first time. All right. So two parts of part A, one part of part B, eight ounces. That would make four ounces. So what does that make? Eight plus four? That's an easy one. Someone said, love the tape funnel hack. Yeah. I was wondering what the heck you were doing. <laughs> Kind of leaked that all over, man. What the heck? Oh, yeah, that's a great thing. Look at that. And watch. Just a V on there. Don't you get oh. that on <laughs> Oh, get it off. Look how clean that is. Yeah. Nobody's seen a rim that clean. All right. Someone said, what's the difference between 2K sealer and 2K primer? Uh, 2K sealer is a primer. And I guess sealer would be considered um, something that seals it up rather than is not sandable afterwards. If you let it dry, then you would have to scuff it 
to allow something else to adhere to it. But um, yeah, it's just a it's just, it is a timer, I guess. Um, it's just a it's not meant to be sanded. Hopefully that answers that question for you. And also a sealer, I guess, a lot of times is meant to be sprayed down, and then you you let it kind of flash off, and then you go straight to paint. So it's a wet on wet is what they call it. What we're doing is this paint's going to dry overnight, and we're going to sand it tomorrow. And I actually have a, the tank to these two parts. They're already finished, so we're going to be able to kind of go over the sanding process a little bit later. Um, once we get these sprayed, we'll be able to go up there, sand the tank, and then you'll know how to bring these up from bare metal out of the bag with the primer and be ready for paint. Mitch sent you a $10 super chat. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Did you take the screen out of that one or no? Nah, you don't need to. The screen only needs to come out when it's metal plate. Um, metal plate. Right. Yes. Okay. We're going to use a to do the same gun I use for everything. One three, uh, lime line one three. I use it for my base coats. I use it for my primer. I use it for my clear coat. Um, it just works all around for me. I mean, once you get into it and get deeper into it, you might want to buy more guns, a uh, clear coat gun, a base coat gun. I like to use the same gun and I like to keep it clean. So people say, yeah, you might get a chunk in it, but yeah, that's true. But if you clean it good enough, you won't. But sometimes you steal too, so it's not nice, you know. Can it be used on fiberglass and aluminum? Uh, it can, yes. As long as it's prepped right. Once again, painting on fiberglass, that's a, that's a whole animal in itself. But we won't go into that. Let me check this thing, make sure it's right, okay? up yet. All right. Someone said, are you supposed to reduce primer or just shoot it after mixing? Yeah, we might throw a little bit of reducer in there. Um, not necessary, but you can reduce it up to 10%. But uh, we're going to go ahead and shoot it just like that.
No, I was answering somebody on the other oh, line. Really? Oh, <laughs> but you, damn it, I should have well, watched. Usually I have to ask because I'm mean, a little like, that's in a spot to keep them flying around. But damn, <laughs> like cat and mouse game in there. <laughs> okay, I'm going to, uh, like we mentioned before, we talked about before I just went in the booth, um, whether to reduce this out. And we're going to go ahead and do that. It was a little thicker than I wanted it. Um, it's okay for the first coat, but I'm, I'm wanting to lay out a little smoother. And um, it seems like it might have been a little bit. So that's the nice thing about this stuff. Is you can so, add a little bit of thinner to it. Someone has a question. They said, can you go over your gun setup for shooting primer, like air pressure and fan setting? Um, okay, so fan setting is going to be open all the time. And that kind of depends on what you're spraying, though. If you're spraying like a frame that's like a tube, then maybe you would want to shrink that down. But um, to be honest with you, it's always open fan because I, you get the best atomization. You're going to get the best, um, less orange peel and stuff like that. But um, I like to use the one three all the, all around for everything I do. Um, primer a lot of times is sprayed out of like a one four, one five, one six, one seven, one eight even. Um, if it's a polyester, maybe even a 2.0 or something, which is some tip sides but uh, um, you can always reduce this down and do more coats and I feel like doing more coats is better than trying to pile it all on at one time with a big ass gun because that's going to trap a lot of solvents and give you a lot of problems and then someone said do you just black out the underneath or spray it the same color uh, I saw somebody on Instagram the other day they custom painted the inside of their fenders <laughs> why <laughs> it's amazing i just loved it I but do you idea. see that no not really maybe <laughs> you can peek at it i think that's what's so great about it so i don't know i might actually paint the undersides of these hmm. kind so, of stupid huh i did it on a tank before never on fenders though hmm. all right i'm just gonna go ahead and shake this around someone said you need to mount a gopro on your paint gun laugh out loud yeah someone said heck yeah that would be awesome. Wow, that's a great idea. Someone asked, how big is your spray booth? Trying to convince the wife to kick me out of the garage and let me get a storage building for a studio spray booth. Yeah, it's a 14 by 12. Do you spray the metal flake with the 1-3? Yes, if it's Limeline, I do. Someone saw you changing the parts. Damn, I wish I would have saw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, it was ridiculous. Someone oh, said, <laughs> Someone said, I can't even read, I'm laughing. Yeah. Quick clear coat question. Have you ever sprayed the finish line clear coat wet on wet? If so, did your res did you notice better results or not really? Uh, I've never done it wet on wet, I guess. I'm not sure what that means. The wet, uh, I have used finish line though, and it's been good. Not sure on the wet on wet part. Okay, I reduced that out some more. It's ready for another coat. You can ask me more questions when I come back. But okay. you want to just peek through the window this time, so I don't have to do that again. Because I you just... want me to watch you chase the parts. Is that it? Okay. No, no, no. I have two hands now. Wait, you want me to have the phone peek through there? Yeah, you just want to peek in here. Or like put it on the window, or what? It's all. Go ahead and yeah. Just... Like this? Sure. Okay. It's dirty. He doesn't want me to watch him chase the parts. Look at him hold it. 
I'm outside the door, and if anybody remembers those Mervyn's commercials where they're standing out the window, open, 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 that's what I feel like. That was. Yeah, I wanted to see you chase it, but you're holding him too hard. Yep. Somebody said, uh, "Is that a white primer?" Um, it's a uh, it's a gray primer. Mm, then someone said, "Oh, Larry sent you a twenty dollars super chat." Oh yeah, Larry. Thanks, he appreciates it, and it's the best night of the week. Yeah, and those uh, if, if you guys that won last week, if you haven't gotten your stuff by now, it should probably be tomorrow. Yeah. And we shipped everything out on uh, Monday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, we did. So y'all got, everybody got their stuff, or should be getting their stuff. I told them what, <laughs> while you were in there, do you remember those Mervyn's commercials? Back in the day, and the lady goes outside the door, oh, yeah. and she's like, open, open. That's what I felt like, just staring at you through the freaking door. <laughs> This is just lacquer thinner. That's usually all it takes. I just kind of run it through a couple times. You can take the cap off if you want, not necessary. Okay, until next time. All right. Let's, um, I can take that and put a lid on this thing, huh? Oh, you just spilled on it. Okay. All right, so we're going to go upstairs and we're going to check out the tank that I painted, primed yesterday. So it's ready to go. We're going to talk a little bit about guide coat, what it does, and why we use it. So I'm going to hand that over to me. I'll race you. <laughs> okay. Back at home, upstairs. Okay, so grab some new pair of gloves here. So I primered this thing yesterday. Same method. I even reduced it out a little more on the last coat. I did do 
Um, I did make a couple of texture and some spots because I wanted to show you guys a few things, like why we use the guide coat. I didn't want to smooth this thing out on primer and make it so like glass that we didn't have any issues. So I kind of I kind of primered it for that reason. At least that's what I said, or maybe I mixed it up. I don't know. Um, you can see there's an orange pill there. Um, I sprayed it really. Where did I do it? Right here. Lots of, I sprayed it really thick right there to make a lot of orange peel. Also a little bit light. Reason why I want to show you, like like I said, why we use the guide coat right here. Wish I should start shaking this thing because it takes uh, a hot minute to get this thing mixed up. But the reason why we use this is to guide us, hence the name, guide us um, to what's low and what's high and what's even. What's smooth? What's contour? And it's only like twelve bucks, so not necessary, but it definitely makes your job easier. Let me get this thing mixed up, though. I can tell this thing's thick. Someone said, "Come in." Yeah, you're on. Someone asked, um, "Would you recommend cleaning a gun with lacquer thinner, or say like 3M or Naked Gun cleaner?" You can use the gun cleaner um, or lacquer thinner. I think lacquer thinner would be, uh, that would be my, that might be my go-to. It's always available. It's cheap. The gun cleaner is probably going to cost you more. There's some stuff in the aerosol can that works really good, but it's just like, I can't remember how much, but it goes fast. <laughs> Clean your gun like three times and you just spent like 15 bucks. Okay, is this thing mixed up? Let's check it out. Oh. Someone asked. Um, it's a brand new can, so. Someone asked, do you have gallon options on your line? Uh, no, not at the moment. Just the quartz. Okay, we are using Sim Guide Coat. So that's pretty good. Let's see if we got this. Oh, yeah, we're good. Okay, we're going to give this thing just a, a light coat, just like that. Just like if we were spraying it. You see, we don't, we don't have full coverage. That's exactly what we're looking for. We don't want to cover the whole thing. That's not necessary. We're just, you just be wasting material at that point. You just need to get an, a nice, even coat. And maybe I'll do, overdo it a little bit just because that way we can see it better. But really, you don't need much of this. It goes a long ways. One can could last you months. A lot of paint jobs, so. Someone said... Uh, well, a light coat of any black paint work. No, this has this is more of like a talcum powder in it. It's going to cause less problems and less plugging of your sandpaper. If you didn't have anything else, um, uh, black spray paint would work. Just spray it super light. Like, don't spray it this heavy. I do half of this because it is going to plug up your paper a little bit. This stuff sands right off. It doesn't. It's just like a black powder kind of. I think, it, I think it is talcum powder, actually. And it's talcum and one other thing. I can't remember exactly offhand in my mind. But there we go. Just like that. Easy enough. Um, let me grab my sander real quick. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and use the um, DA sander, Limeline 6-inch DA sander we talked about earlier. We're going to go ahead and use the interface pad as well. Now, if this thing had any kind of body damage, or say we bonded a dent and we primered over that, we, we probably wouldn't want to use this tool to start out. We would use a hard block sander and we would crisscross and block over the uh, the damage or the imperfection to make sure that we're getting the surface all the way smooth and we're helping say like there's a little bit of wave in it this primer 
has some depth to it to where you can cut kind of cut that wave out so you can further do body work i guess i guess you can say it like that you can further do body work um, by hard using the hard block but we're gonna it's pretty good we're gonna use a interface pad with a six inch sander so this thing just works just like velcro 600 grit limeline somebody said someone asked can you talk about grits for removing orange peel as you sand uh yeah so it really it depends if you're um removing orange peel to polish it out you're going to want to use um no uh nothing more crazy than like uh 1200 grit like i would say 1200 grit would be max um even to be safe would be 2000 grit um before you uh you know you polish that out so whether or not you hand sand any parts etc uh sometimes i hand sand i try not to i think they're talking about with removing orange peel maybe yeah yep so right now we're going to be removing orange peel right now we're going to be re removing orange peel there's orange peel all over in this thing and once i start sanding on it we'll look at it um but since we're removing orange peel on primer we're going to use 600 grit because we plan on putting base coat down on this also with graphics and uh, more clear coat obviously more layers are going on top so we're going to hit it with 600 grit so we're going to get we're going to smooth this out getting rid of the orange peel um, and any of the sand scratches and the little gouges and imperfections that are in the metal are going to get sanded smooth because we do have a thickness there of primer um, that we're going to smooth out so yeah we're getting rid of orange peel get rid of that answer that question right now 600 grit for this if you just got done clear coating and you're about done and you need to cut and polish well you're going to use 2000 grit and then you're going to use 3000 grit and then if you want you can use 5000 grit and then uh move to a polish after that so we're going to go ahead and hit this you can see how much orange peel like that didn't look like much orange peel but look at that that is a lot how much orange peel is that ash that's a lot of orange peel nectarine size yeah <laughs> I mean, look at that. That's terrible. That's a lot. That is a lot. I mean, okay. So that's what guide coat does for you. Like if you were to sand that without guide coat, uh, really that would look good. And then if you were to touch it, that actually seems pretty smooth too. But in all reality, right here, you can see all the low spots, all the orange peel. So I'm going to kind of go over this whole thing lightly. <laughs> Look, we have really big orange peel right here because I just flooded it out right there. But you can see that this is going to smooth everything out. I'll move this water over here. We'll flip this thing on its side. You know what? Maybe I'll. Got this purple towel. Let me stick that on Someone says, after you tape your panels and mask them for spraying base coat, do you hit it with clear before starting your graphics? I worry about pulling base coat off after you do the negative mask. Uh, not necessarily. Um, I, I like to start my graphics on the first layer of base coat that I have because um, generally I'm doing multiple layers of graphics and... Um, that way I can at least get started on them. Yeah, so at this point, I, if it, I, I'm not sure exactly the graphics we're gonna be doing on this yet, but um, they may go metal flake, they may go with another graphic, they may go with a solid color, and then we'll do graphics on top of that. I'm not sure yet, um, that'll kind of be determined, but did, what was the question? <laughs> I got talking, I can't remember. After you tape out your panels and mask them for spring. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always nice, because you got a nice, smooth, sanded, clear coat that you can that your paint sticks better um i i always like to re-clear stuff and then come in the morning sand it and, and do more and then just clear it again 
Someone asked, are you going to do the complete custom paint process on these tins on the live stream? Yeah, not, not this particular live stream, but that'd be a long live stream. <laughs> but yeah, we will. I don't know if it'll be on live streams, but it'll be videos and other content. We're going to wipe it down. You can see there's just so much still. But you can see how high it was right here. And it's actually, like, look at it. It's actually dipped in this whole area right here. interface pads is that what it is yeah yeah i like the ones with uh yeah i like the uh the ones with no holes they last longer there's ones that are have holes in it that are for i guess for water i don't know what they're for but like i guess the ones that suck water or the maybe it's for the vacuum but yeah get the solid ones I feel like they get more even pressure too, but I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. Um, you if you're not, uh, you don't you don't really need to. You're not gonna need to use guide coat. Just sand it and scuff it down. And put the and put the adhesion promoter on that, and then go straight to paint. Why don't you block it? Uh, Cause I don't want to like wear out my rotator cuff really. I like to do like, it doesn't need, really need to be blocked. Um, the parts are good. They're, uh, yeah, they can be, you can block it. It's just a lot of work. This is much easier. And it doesn't wear out your joints, you know? Cause I can seriously, like I used to block everything and my rotator cuff is on, my right hand is like it's kind of screwed up man i don't i wish i wouldn't have done so much of it see right here i kind of burned through the metal it's not that big of a deal i just want to make sure i've already sanded that good enough right there not to hit it again see right here we have some sand scratches that may be deeper than what the, the thickness of the primer will provide i'll probably hit that with the spray can primer um because there is a little aerosol spray can i don't know some people probably know upol has a brand um it's just a one part and it's you can use it but just kind of use it sparingly in in spots here and there you wouldn't want to use it as an overall it's just not durable enough I'm using 600 grit. You could use down to 400 grit if you want, and it would be a little faster, but uh, yeah, I'll let you 600 grit. 
and you don't risk any sand scratches. I can't. I don't really know what uh, paint scheme we're doing on this yet. But like, if this was going silver base coat, then I definitely 100% would not use 400 grit because there's a good chance that those uh, fine scratches will still show up. If I was to flake these and know I'm flaking them, I could go with 400 grit all day long because they're going to go black base coat and then a bunch of clear coat and flake is going to be pounded on the top of this thing. So it is going to cover any kind of imperfection you have. This is primer. On the DA? Uh, we usually don't do a PSI on the DA. Like it's not usually measured that way. Um, with a DA, you run it just fast enough that um, it works good. Like you don't want to overdo it. Like it's really, it's by sound and not really by, I, I, I judge it by sound. Because there's this, which sounds good doing more work because even though it's not going as fast it's still going to do more work than if you were to like crank this thing up <laughs> makes a bigger mess and it doesn't even do it to be honest with you it does less work and it wears out your paper faster so i like to have it just at a hum not that slow something like this Someone said, do you draw out your image or come up with it on the flight? Um, usually I'll get with the customer. They'll kind of give me some ideas. Um, I'll get some printouts maybe from them. And then I will um, basically mock it up with tape. But nothing's really drawn out or illustrated or anything like that. It's all, if I'm going to show the customer, I'm going to mock it up with tape and then give them a call with some pictures and say, hey, this is what we're going to be doing this is what this is kind of the paneling idea we're going to put this here we're going to put that there we're going to do the blue here this is going to be solid black and really with a couple of pictures just mocking it up um with a like a just with some tape just roughly and it gives you an idea to kind of experiment with different stuff to see what looks good and and yeah i usually at that point that i'll send them a picture say this is what i'm thinking this is what i recommend and then figure it out from there. Yeah. So if you're going to be doing some airbrush work, usually I would take the the reference image, print it out, and then just tape it in that spot to size. That way I'm like, okay, so say they want a skull on the front fender, just for instance. Then I would print out that skull or something to that size um, and just stick it on that fender, like temporarily with the tape and say, okay, this is the plan. That's how, that's my mock-up. Top of that tank's looking Someone really good. That it's nice that I help you with the live stream. Yeah, definitely is nice, especially today. You saw me holding that camera. Someone, <laughs> someone else asked, "Do you have an ETA on your primer?" The primer? Yeah, the primer's on Amazon. Um, it's actually, I think there's a five dollar coupon attached to it. Say five dollar. Someone said. There you go. Um. Okay. So, you want to do graphics on the hood of your 
Truck? Huh. I would do what you like. Um, maybe mock it up on, we have those, I think for like 18 bucks or something like that. We have those little mini hoods that you could like, uh, basically paint your idea out on it beforehand. Um, but I would, depending on the style you want and then the color of your truck, if you don't plan on repainting the whole truck, you're just painting something on the, on the hood, then, um, I would, I would choose the paint scheme that would go along with the color you already have, I guess. Like if it's already blue, then maybe I would do a candy blue and metal flake. I don't know. Maybe a silver and blue, dark blue, light blue, or if you have red, then maybe red tones, maybe silver. Uh, yeah. Depends on maybe the vehicle, what you, whatever, you know, it's hard to say. I, I don't paint a lot of hoods to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, I do put a little bit of pressure on there. Nothing too gnarly. You can press down pretty hard if you want. And especially with the interface pad, it's really not going to do anything. I mean, it's just going to plug up and wear out your paper faster, to be honest. It's better just to kind of give it a medium pressure. And also, see, I'm, the, the movement, I'm, I'm, I'm not like going all crazy. Like, I'm giving it enough time in a certain spot to be able to do the work that it needs to, to do like so okay let's take a look at this spot right here all that orange pill so if i was to go real fast real hard it's going to take just as much if not longer and wear out your pad faster than if i was just to give it medium pressure i kind of just drag it along until that guide coat has shown that it's smoothed out. And you can see a little bit right here that there's a few specks right there. Have I ever attended a uh, event like that um, or donated work? Yes, I have. Um, I've done stuff for at like local events here Nothing probably of that scale. Uh, I don't pinstripe, so I've never done a pinstriping panel jam. They look like fun, but I just don't pinstripe. So they're really, I'm kind of usually just in my studio. Live. Uh, go ahead and put it on the screen. Okay, so so does Limeline make their own DAs or is it made by Dynabraid? No, it's a. Uh, yeah, the um, I've never had a Dynabraid. They're good stuff. Um, I don't know. It's not definitely though. I have these uh, made by another manufacturer that also makes our um, gear driven uh, the rotary polishers too. But uh, this is a couple of different designs we went through until I found the RPM that I wanted. And the the throw and stuff like there's there's a lot of different variables with these things that make them different than like for woodworking and stuff like that. But no, it's not. It's um it's Limeline's own private label off of another manufacturer. But yeah, maybe it is, and I just don't know it. Uh, usually if people have problems with something, they can, the best place to hit me up is on Instagram. Uh, if you try to, my comments are usually flooded on YouTube and it's hard to keep up with it. But on Instagram, that is one thing I check like solid, kind of like an email every day. So if you have questions, try the Instagram page on Time Warp. I can probably help you out there. But, but no, there's no really any paid thing. If you, if it is, then probably don't do it. Just, just contact me on Instagram. I'll help you out. Looks like I'm finishing up at the last of this because we just got a little bit here on the front. Oh, yeah, we're just about done.
Yeah, it's looking good. Oh, one thing I want to kind of point out is before I go into paint, I will scuff this all down. Um, I did leave this open for the time being because I didn't want to primer all the way over the metal. Um, but once this goes into base coat, this will get masked up right here and get trimmed out. That uh, fuel pump needs to go up in there. And, but it does need a, a smooth surface. I like to make sure there's primer there. Um, I don't like if you were to have an edge and you cut it off in the wrong spot, that gasket may not lay right. So um, not, you could even back mask this if you wanted. It wasn't sealed or anything, so I figured that was fine. But um, yeah, that's a, one thing to keep in mind. Also, taping up the fuel spout. Uh, I'll probably end up retaping that because it, it's got a little jacked here, but. Yeah, make sure you do that so you don't get paint all up in there. They do not like, customers do not like to see that. And I know I've seen it before, like some newbies, and they would just, I guess, forget to tape that out, and they would just paint in there. So don't do that. Just tape it off. Oh, we got a little bit of a... Is it better to have a bigger or smaller throw on the D8? Uh, it depends on what you're doing. It's uh, having a smaller throw is uh is better for if you're finished sanding for like a uh, cut and polish it's has less of a chance of giving you those little curlies um because it's moving uh at a different diameter diameter smaller but still spinning at the same rate but i think you know i don't think i have any more oh i should probably I got that part right there. Maybe I'll hit that. I'll hit the, some last questions if you guys have them. But let me go ahead and scuff this up. Just grab a sanding pad. The nice thing about these compared to Scotch Bright is you can get into your edges and it actually still smooths it out rather than just scuffing it up. But making sure you get all up in those areas, like right here. See, I couldn't really get in there with the sander. I want to make sure you hit up all that and at least get it scuffed down like that. Same thing there. Get all this guide coat off. Get your pad up in there. Get all that. Same thing under the tank. The, the paint's going, now that this is dried and been sanded, um, the paint is counting on the scratches that we're putting into the surface of the primer here to be able to adhere. It's called a mechanical adhesion. That's one of the two ways that I know of the, how paint sticks It's going either going to stick mechanically like we have here to a scratch, or it's going to attach uh, chemically, which um, the primer itself has um, its own. However, it's formulated has stuff in it. That's going, it's formulated to chemically, adhere to the metal but from this point on if it's whatever we spray on there is not going to chemically adhere to that on a wet on wet like they like we talked about earlier doing a sealer and then you're letting it flash off and then go straight into base coat well that's a chemical adhesion because we're not scuffing the primer the sealer we are uh, just applying it right on top while there is a small window of time that allows you to recoat that and it will chemically bond and adhere to the primer. But like I said, we these are sandable, so they have to dry, because obviously we're not sanding them while they're wet. And um, we are creating, while sanding it, we are creating the uh, the mechanical adhesion for the next layers to, to grab onto. So hopefully that makes sense. That's a lot of boring stuff to talk about, but very, very important because I get so many questions about paint peeling and other other issues like that people will say well it peeled off of it peeled they don't even like i'm like well where did it where did the paint release from like what what was the layer what caused it you know did it come off of the primer was it the primer came off the metal you know if, if that's the case on this if say like we were to tape it later put the base coat on it tape layer pulled it and we went straight down to metal well we know we have some kind of a, either we could have mix the paint wrong most likely it's improper um uh some kind of a contamination like the oil that we what like we dealt with before when we first pulled these out was uh a residue was left behind the paint it, it is not going to stick to that it's like if you 
if you put tape over it, it's going to peel it off and it's going to keep peeling until it has something to grab onto. And at that point, you're in a lot of crap and you don't want to be to that point. So make sure you, like like the process that we did, we cleaned them three times. I think we even cleaned them four times before they went in the booth and got that primer. So now I'm sure that they're clean. We used three or four different rags, uh, about half a bottle of that cleaner. And I feel really comfortable about those. And I know when I go to a base coat, I'm, I'm not even going to think twice about pulling my tape and pulling paints because it just doesn't happen if you do the job right to start with. All right. Well, I'm not going to rub this thing all night. So we had any more questions and we could. Yeah. Exactly. ID crisis has it. Chemical adhesion until the material window is closed. And then if so, that's fine. You would just scuff or sand it. Well, thanks, Al. Ollie. Send a super chat. Thanks, man. And you guys have been super generous with me tonight. I really appreciate it. Next next week, not sure what we'll do. Maybe something more interesting for sure. <laughs> it might be something on this, uh, maybe on the fenders or something like that. But for sure, the tank will have uh, some. We'll have some something to do as far as like a video or something like that. But first, we got to find out what we're doing on this thing. Here's a comment. It says, a question. After you primer, then sand, what do you use to wipe it down? Waterborne surface wipe? Yeah, you can use a waterborne sur for surface wipe. Uh, I, I like to use just regular glass cleaner and a clean rag. And that's what I would do actually right now is I would hose this down with some glass cleaner, wipe it down, double check it, and then uh, straight into base coat or, or into metal flake depending on like I said, depending on the paint scheme. Someone just said butter smooth and we just stay in pink for life. Keep it up. Um, great work. Good stuff. Thanks again. All right, cool. Well, that's it. And so we'll be here next week, right? We ain't going nowhere. Huh. <laughs> Not till the end of the month. Yeah, then we're going somewhere. We'll yeah, make up for here. it. Next Thursday for sure. Thanks again, guys. Thanks for all the super chats. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for sure. Guys.